Welcome back to Economic Outlook. Today we're going to conclude our discussion of the airline industry by looking at fuel hedging, public relations, and what airlines need to do to return to profitability. In our last discussion, we saw that consolidation often does not generate the cost savings airlines expect. Fuel hedging is another way that airlines can attempt to level their variable costs in a predictable way. It's very similar to when other companies monitor their interest rate exposure, foreign exchange risk, or credit exposure. Fuel hedging allows airlines to set level prices and create a foundation for long-term planning. The goal of fuel hedging is not to speculate in oil or make money. Rather, the objective is to set a level price point so that companies can plan long-term strategies. The most successful fuel hedging airline has been Southwest. Since 1999, Southwest has saved over $3.5 billion through its fuel hedges. Last year, the company saved $727 million, and in the first quarter of 2008, Southwest has hedging gains of $291 million versus profits of $34 million. Successful hedging strategies have given Southwest a clear advantage over its competition. For example, in the first quarter, Southwest has been able to purchase jet fuel for $1.93 per gallon. That's a 20% increase from last year. However, its rival American Airlines has been forced to purchase jet fuel at an average price of $2.73 per gallon, a 50% increase. And United has fared even worse, paying $2.83 per gallon. The only downside to fuel hedging is that it can be quite expensive. Last year, Southwest spent $52 million on hedging, and it's already spent $14 million in the first quarter to secure hedges for the following year. The rewards, however, can be great. Southwest has over 70% of its energy needs met at a price of $51 per barrel, when oil today is actually running at over $140 per barrel. Other airlines are also hedging, but not as successfully. On average, the other airlines have 20 to 30% of their fuel needs hedged at prices of around $100 per barrel. So you can see how successful hedging has given Southwest a clear cost advantage over its competitors. We're going to examine three ways airlines typically try to hedge jet fuel prices. First, we'll look at swaps and futures. Second, we'll look at call options. And third, we'll look at collars. So let's get started with swaps and futures and see how those are used to hedge jet fuel prices. Swap contracts allow airlines to specify a fixed price it will pay for jet fuel or another commodity acting as a proxy. Let's look at an example to see exactly how this works. As you can see here, the airline and another company have agreed to a jet fuel swap. The fixed price is $3 per gallon for four days. The maximum quantity that the airline can purchase is 10,000 gallons of jet fuel. Over the course of four days, the airline buys its fuel and pays the market price. However, it keeps a log of the price it's paid, and at the end of the four days, totals the money it spent. In this case, the airline purchased the maximum of 10,000 gallons of fuel and paid $30,375. This means the airline paid an average price of $3.04 per gallon, which is greater than the fixed price. That means the counterparty has to refund the airline the difference between the price it actually paid and what it would have paid had it used the fixed price. So in this case, the airline gets back $375. The airline will experience gains if the prices rise and experience hedging losses if prices fall. There are two main drawbacks to swap contracts. First, they are completely over-the-counter transactions and airlines have to find a counterparty willing to write the transaction. And secondly, these contracts are essentially zero sum. For every dollar the airline gains, the counterparty loses, and vice versa. That means if the airline is incorrect about the direction of prices, it can suffer large losses very quickly. If the airline can't find a counterparty for a jet fuel swap contract, it can often be easier to find a counterparty for other commodities like oil. If the airline does this, it will set up two swaps. One, a direct swap between the airline and the counterparty for oil, and then what's called a differential swap 
to make up the difference in price fluctuations between oil and jet fuel. That means if jet fuel becomes decoupled from oil prices for whatever reason, the differential swap will take care of the difference. Now futures contracts are also similar to swaps. However, futures contracts are standardized and can be traded on exchanges. They also require the buyer of the contract to actually take possession of the commodity at expiration. So for example, an airline could write a futures contract to purchase jet fuel three months down the line. It will set a fixed price today and take receipt of the jet fuel in three months using the price that it locked in when it signed the futures contract. So it's very similar to a swap, except it requires actually taking possession of the commodity. If an airline can't meet its needs through futures contracts, it can also look to the forward market for help. Forwards are customized contracts between two parties. They're very similar to futures in that they'll specify a price today and a quantity to be delivered in the future. However, since they're customized between two parties, they're not traded on exchanges. However, they can provide more flexibility than futures contracts if airlines have specific quantity needs or specific dates that they want to ensure later.